Hello, welcome to Hope Today. We're so glad you joined us. I hope you're having an outstanding day so far. You know, this is the day the Lord has made. He has got great plans and purposes for you. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Sydney Goldman and Amy Schaefer. And it is, it is, it is raining, but it is still a great day. <laughs> yeah, you know, we don't know what's happening in your world or whatever you're going through, but you know, we're so glad that you are joining us today, just taking a little time out because we love to be able to edify and encourage you and uplift your spirit. Right, Amy? Well, and like you said, it's raining. The seasons are changing. Fall is here. The leaves are dropping. And I know that God is changing things in your life life and in my life too, and in our nation's life, things are about to change. So we just keep our hopes up and we keep praying and we keep our eyes fixed on him. You know, I saw on Twitter today, the perfect 2020, end to the year 2020, <laughs> it was a Christmas ornament. It had Santa Claus, it had Santa Claus with his satchel, you know, and he had a mask on, a blue oh. mask. And it said 2020 down at the bottom. And in the satchel were, uh, you know, uh, wet wipes and uh, disinfectant and everything. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord. we're not going to re really need that to remember. But that, that, that sort of wrapped the year right yeah. there. <laughs> Speaking of Santa Claus, okay, Hallmark Christmas movies are almost in full effect. So if we could just pray right now for those who might get into the Hallmark Christmas movie addiction mode. Who would do that? <laughs> It's cool. It's fun. It's like a little bit of joy in the midst of all this crazy. You haven't started playing Christmas music yet, have you? Okay, you're not going to believe this, guys. We put our tree up last night. Oh, my God. We put the tree up last night. Please no call be in jealous. to the prayer line. Will you please jealous. call into the prayer line and pray for Pastor Amy Schaefer no way. here? I love it. <laughs> Well, that's kind of crazy, like Christmas, because it's almost like November and everything's going on. But you know what? I think with 2020 is like, yes, a lot of things have shifted, but it is so important for us to keep our eyes looking up to Jesus and Christ alone, because we know everything's being shaken in this world, Tom, that no matter what's going on. And you know, we just always have our prayer line that's open and available to you, no matter what situation, no matter what season you're walking through, we're always here for you 24 seven. So give us a call. We're always here for you. That's right. That's right. Our co-hosts need prayer. Here. No. <laughs> Christmas addiction. I don't know what it is. Anyway, uh, we have a great verse here. Matthew 16 verses uh, 13 and through 15. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? The son of man am. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, who do you say that I am? I just have to get some feedback because what a, a powerful question to ask the disciples who had been with them for three years, who do you say that I am? I think that is such an important question that we have to even ask ourselves when it comes to our walk with God is who do we say that Christ is? Not what your mama said, not what your daddy says, not what the preacher, but do you know Jesus mm -hmm. for yourself? I think that is so, so important, Amy, because I think a lot of people, we, you know, I know like me being a millennial or being younger, it's mm -hmm. just like there was a period of time, like I went to church with my mom, but there came a point in time where I had to know who is Jesus to me, to me. because it's a personal relationship. And the Bible says the sheep know his voice. So we have to know that we are his sheep and that we hear him. That's right, because one day we are going to stand before the Father. He's going to say, who do you say that I am? And you need to be able to answer that question. You've got to search it out for yourself. You are my Father. You are the Lamb of God. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're the God of Israel. You're God, and there is no other like you. I mean, you have to know for yourself who he is. He's the lion. He is the lamb. He is the first. He is the last. Know who God is in your life. And really just, just know him. Know him with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. You know, uh, our former president, Ron Hember, used to always say, when did Jesus become more than a word to you? That was kind of like a question he would ask a lot of guests because it has to be that. It has to be more than a word, more than a name, more than, uh, as Sydney said, your parents' faith, your grandparents' faith. It's got to be yours. You need to know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can call the prayer partners. It's, it's, they can walk you through that process. It's very simple, but it's also very life changing. It is everything. When Jesus becomes everything to you, right. you begin to see everything differently and you begin to see God as he really is 
not as everything that the world has told us. Yeah, and you know, usually a lot of times, you know, we bring a story just to encourage you to see, you know, show what's going on in the world. But you know what, I really felt today that the most important story that's been the breaking good news story for 2,000 years is Christ and Christ alone, that he died for our sins and he was resurrected. So our heart for you, and it's always been here at Hope Today, is for you to know Jesus, that we want you to be able to say, I know who Jesus is in my life, that he is my savior, he is my prince of peace, he is my all in all. So I just encourage encourage you today, friend, surrender your life to Jesus. You know, there's so many things happening and I really feel like right now it's a wake up call where God is calling us. If you don't know him, if there's idols in your life, I don't care how far away you've strayed. I don't care if you're an addiction. I don't care if you've cheated. I don't care what you've done. Guess what? Jesus died for that. Jesus paid for that. So give us a call at our prayer line because we really, really want you to know our heart is for you to know Jesus like never before in this Amen. season. That's so good, right. Sydney. Well, you know, understanding the signs and times of our world today is vitally important for believers. Our next guest is able to help us connect the dots prophetically found in God's end time plan. Pastor Larry Huck is the author of the book, The Seven Living Prophecies, and he joins us now to help discern what God is saying right now. Pastor Larry, welcome to Hope Today. Tom, it's great to be with you guys. Uh, Amy and Sydney, great to, you guys are so happy, so full of the Holy Spirit. It, what, a, what a great way to start somebody's morning by being with you guys. And so I'm excited to be with you. Well, we'd like to ask you first off to give us an update on, I know Tiz, your wife, has gone through some, uh, some difficulties. And also, you've just come through a season with your, your grandson. Could you just uh, update us on what's going on? Yeah, and, and I'm glad you asked that because that is the main reason I wrote this book. And, and guys, I want everybody to understand, uh, I didn't write this book uh, in January when the coronavirus and the and the rioting in the streets and everything took place. Uh, we actually finished this book with Charisma in December, and then all of these things happened. And the reason I wrote it is because uh, to give people uh, biblical hope that our best is yet to come. The guys, we're in the time of miracles, we're in the season in which God promises to pour out his spirit. Uh, Lion, our, our then seven month old grandchild was diagnosed with uh, a leukemia that no child, they've never had a child survive this kind of leukemia. And uh, then in the middle of that, uh, my wife Tiz got ovarian cancer and they basically gave her three months to live and uh, when, when they diagnosed with Lyon, uh, they called us in about three weeks later and said, listen, we checked this 20 times or so to make sure we were right. We called the five or six heads of children's cancer uh, around the world. And to verify this, Lyon has a gene, a positive gene, that no child, we have no medical record of anywhere in the world, a child his age having this positive gene, and it took him from no chance of survival, they said, and they'll never say 100% either way, but 95% survival, he's done with his treatments, it's two and a half years later, he is cancer free, the same time uh, they, they came back with tests on Tiz and said, we don't understand this, we were convinced you have this gene that would pass on to your kids and your grandkids. That gene is not there. We're gonna test again, it's not there. Tis is cancer free. And so that's one of the main reasons I wrote this book uh, on seven living prophecies. These are major prophecies. These are not little things. These are not things that we can say, oh yeah, that, I think that's happening. These are seven major prophecies. And while we were going through these needs, God spoke to me and said, you know that I am the same yesterday, I'm the same tomorrow, but I am the God of miracles today. And so uh, we wrote this book. Little did we know what would happen now with uh, in January and February and the coronavirus and the econ economic uh, crisis that we're in. But this is a book that when you read it, Number one, you'll realize we are in that time, guys, that God opens the windows of heaven. You know, the Bible says, is there not an appointed time? And, I, and, I, and guys, I say this all the time. God is God 24-7. Every moment of every day, God is a miracle-working God. 
But the scripture says, call upon the Lord when he is near. And, you know, we don't have much time, but that's why God has appointed times. He's the same God, but there are times according to God's prophetic calendar that his power is closer. You know, Tiz said it this way on our, on our television program the other day, that it's the same God. We have the same sun in Texas here in January as we have in August. But in August, the intensity of that sun is stronger because it's closer. And that's what I wanted everybody to see in this prophecy book, that the power of God, the miracles of God are closer to us right now than they've ever been. Wow. Larry, you have always had such a strong voice for Israel and really teaching us as believers our connection. What's happening in Israel right now according to biblical prophecy and how does that apply to us as the church? Well, it, it's absolutely amazing. Um, if, if you look at um, what President Trump has done, moving the embassy, uh, giving sovereignty over to Golan Heights, the whole uh, Judea Samaria issue, this is world changing. Mm -hmm. But now what we're seeing is uh, Muslim nations coming into what they call normalization. And uh, we, we know that several of these nations have done this. Uh, I know that Saudi Arabia is coming in. I, I know that several other, about four or five other nations are coming in. There's going to be a season of peace in the nation of Israel. Like they, you know, one of my friends in the Israeli government said, we're seeing things happen in Israel that we didn't think would happen until the Messiah came. Mm. And this is to us a wake up call. You know, the Bible says, Amy, blow the trumpet in Zion, right. sound the alarm. And that alarm is a wake up call. It's a waking the church up and say, get ready for the greatest outpouring of my power and my spirit. And Israel is always that example. Mm -hmm. That's why we wrote these books concerning the church, these prophecies concerning the church and concerning Israel, because Israel is always the blowing of the shofar. Israel is always the sounding of the alarm. And what's happening in Israel right now needs to be a wake up call for every one of us that God is getting ready to do amazing things like never before yes. in the history of the Bible. Amen. Amen, fantastic. Well, the book is called Seven Living Prophecies. Could you maybe explain that name and just a couple of them to us uh, in the time that we have here? What are the ones that, uh, that uh, you know, people will say, well, okay, I understand there's prophecy, Jesus is going to come back, but how does that apply to me today? But you bring that out very, very much in the book. Yeah, when you see these things begin to happen, look up, for your redemption draws nigh. And that's not just the redemption of the rapture, guys. That's the redemption of healing of cancer, mm -hmm. uh, financial uh, breakthrough, everything that we need to go out a glorious church. You look at uh, one of the main prophecies that I put in there is Israel becoming a nation. And the reason I use that is because for this is where replacement theology came from. People said Israel will never become a nation. It's never happened in the history of the world. It, it's never happened to any nation. It can't happen. And so that's where replacement theology came from. We're the new Israel. We've replaced Israel. But in 1948, what does God's word say? He said, when you see this happen, it will be a waving banner to the nations that there is one generation left. So not only are Jews returning, but let me give you another one that piggybacks on that. The Bible says in rebuilding the tabernacle of David, Gentiles will help bring these Gentiles back. So all of a sudden, as you guys know, there is a worldwide wake up call to returning to our Jewish roots, returning to uh, a, a Jewish Jesus, a Jewish Bible. And when and there, there was a great rabbi by the name of Rabbi Schneerson, he said, when this happens, this is a sign that the Messiah is on his way. When Gentiles return to the Jewish roots of their faith. And he said, at first, at first people will say, why are you doing this? But the Gentiles who open their eyes to this, they will see such favor from God that it will get the world's attention. 
And guys, that's what is happening right now. And little did we know we would need that more right now than ever before. This is a time for the miracle power of God. Well, you know, Larry, right now in our nation, we're in a critical time. We're in a season of election less than a week away. Do you see any living prophecies that are happening right now? Oh, Amy, that's a beautiful question. In sec in 2 Samuel 24, the Bible t uh, tells us about David taking a census. And God is angry. In fact, David's uh, advisor said, don't do this. Don't take a census. David took a census not to figure out how many people were serving God, but how big his kingdom was. And God, because of this, God released a plague mm. on all of Israel. And the Bible says something important. The, the, the census took nine months and 20 days. And when you study the Bible in Hebrew, every word means something specific. Why does God say nine months and 20 days? Nine, you, guys, you, you guys are ladies. What happens in around nine months and 20 days? A child is born. When, when, this epidem when this pandemic came out and the rioting on the streets, if you look at when it became known to the world and you look at the, the time of the elections, it is nine months and 20 days. Wow. You can't make that up. God is getting ready to birth something. And the reason I wrote this book, and I know now, is God doesn't want anyone to miss this. The, these are the birth pangs. Mm. That's what we're feeling. In Hebrew, it's called Ikvot Mashiach, mm. hearing the footsteps of the Messiah. God wants the church to wake up, yes. to begin to serve him, but also as they serve him, look for the end time outpouring of God's anointing power and strength. Wow. wow what, what, is, what does that end time church look like to you? What, when we receive, when we begin to really get a hold of God and receive that outpouring, how does the church mobilize after that? Well, you know, the, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, Tom, that we're going out a glorious church. And I believe what God is going to do is pour out his spirit on every believer that's truly serving God. I believe all this is a wake-up call. Mm. The wake-up call that a lot of the church may have gotten a little, maybe gotten a little lazy in their serving God, as the scripture calls it, a little lukewarm. I think it's a wake-up call. You look at the rioting in the streets, you look at the pandemic, you look at the economic crisis. You know, it, here in our church in Dallas, I'm doing a, a back another series on Bible prophecy of, of what's happening in our world right now. And when you look at this, this is a wake up call to the church and we're seeing the church. Like I said, we, we we're seeing the response in our television program. Um, I was with uh, um, Marcus Lamb, who runs Daystar, and he we were golfing. He said, he said, are, are you seeing what we're seeing? People are coming back. There's a wake-up call. Mm. I see the church that lets God open their eyes to the timetable that we're on. I see a refreshing of the Holy Spirit, of the gifts of the Spirit, of signs, wonders, and miracles. You know, let me tell you guys this. In ancient Hebrew, there's no word for coincidence. And what Hebrew teaches is when you see or hear of a miracle in somebody else's life, it's because you're next. And the reason I wrote this book is was God spoke to me. We had no hope for Lion in the natural, no hope for Tiz in the natural. And God said, look at my prophecies. Look where we are. This isn't what's, what happened 2,000 years ago. This is not what's going to happen 100 years from now. I'm th doing this right now. And so I believe that everybody in the church that God uh, that allows God to open their eyes. Jesus said they have eyes, but they don't see. Blessed are you who have eyes to see. I believe we're going to see revival in the church. We're going to see anointing. We're going to see signs and wonders and miracles. We're going to see the gifts of the spirit, not nonsense in the Holy Spirit, a true outpouring of the power of God that will let the world know that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen, even so, Lord Jesus. 
This book is called The Seven Living Prophecies. Pastor Larry Huck, thank you so much for being so with good. us. Thank you for your long relationship with our ministry. We're so glad to uh, talk to you and so glad to hear the good news in your family as well. Thank you. Amen. We love you guys. Thank you so much. All right. God bless. Well, we'll be back uh, with uh, some great soup uh, shortly. <laughs> The Bible tells us that Jesus came that we might have life to the fullest, but financial setbacks and debt plague our world and afflict those God loves. Do you find yourself in a spiritual battle against debt, delay, or poverty? Do you need a divine weapon against the enemy right now? Now's the time to fight back using prayers and promises for financial breakthrough by Joan Hunter. This guide will provide you with needed truth from God's holy word for abundance in every area of your life. Filled with inspirational testimonies, scriptural promises, intimate prayers, and powerful declarations, it will bring peace and encouragement. This month, for your ministry gift to Cornerstone Television, request prayers and promises for financial breakthrough. We'll send it to you right away. To give, call 888-665-4483 or donate at ctvn.org. Thank you so much for your partnership. Together, we are giving hope and seeing lives transformed. On tomorrow's Hope Today, soups from home. The Hope Today team shares how a simple bowl of soup brings warmth to their family. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. kitchen. I'm Sydney here with my husband, Jay. Hello. So we are given the task to make soups from home. I have a little confession to make. I'm terrible at making soup. She's not terrible. We've tried a few and thus far we haven't really eaten any of the one. We tried Italian wedding soup once. Oh, um, it was bad. <laughs> we also tried chicken noodle. That didn't turn out very well. Yeah, it was kind of so bad. So today well. what we're going to do is... Miso soup. Yes. Miso soup is a Japanese soup. I work at a sushi restaurant, so we were talking about this whole idea, and we decided, why don't we make miso soup? Because Jake says anybody can do it, so if yeah. I can do it, anybody can do it. So Jake, tell us, how do we make miso soup? First step, boiling water. So we have the water boiling on our stove right there. Okay, Jake. Once the water gets to a boil, you want to add miso paste. Um, put the miso paste in along with vegetable bouillon, depending on how much water you have, you know, depending on how much of this you're going to want to put in. Um, so you get the miso paste and the vegetable bouillon, stir it really good. Stir, stir, stir. That might be the hardest part. <laughs> stir it very well. You don't want any chunks of the miso uh, paste or anything. You just want it to be a broth. Yeah. And then we have these prepared cups that my husband has made. So what's in this cup, babe? Okay. First we got green onion. Green onion. Yum. Seaweed strips. Seaweed strips. Healthy. And tofu. Tofu. Yummy. So is it anybody can eat if you're vegan or you like chicken or whatever. You can eat it. So it's every it's a suitable for everyone. Yes. We love it. We're going to have some right now. Yeah. Yum, yum, yum. So we're so glad that you joined us in our kitchen today. So we hope that you will try the miso soup, that it's easy, it's simple, and it's, you know, it's unique. Yeah, it is. Have a great day. Have God bless day. you. Yum, yum. So I have to give a big shout out to my husband, Jake, that really hooked me up with the miso soup that he does it every day. So I just want to say thank you, sweetheart, because he really hooked me up. So yeah, there's, it's, it's healthy, it's seaweed, it's different. So mm. Mm. Cool. hopefully we'll get some green in our teeth. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's so good, yeah. hearty. Really? Yeah, so you should put it with sushi, like you pair it with. Yes. So if you're curious about how to make miso soup, we have it on our website at ctvn.org. So definitely check it out and make miso because honestly, I tried it, I did it, and I didn't ruin the soup. So, <laughs> well, and this is something. Oh, you could pair this with like a garlic toast. So mm -hmm. yummy. I mean, this is good and it's healthy. It's very hearty. I'm eating seaweed on television. You are eating seaweed. <laughs> seaweed has a lot of healthy factors, so it's really good for your spirit and feeding your temple and everything that's going yeah, on. It's so very yeah. tasty. Very good. Uh, with the with the onions in there, I love I love the onion the flavor onion. in there. It's really mm. good. Amen. Well, what a great thank program you, today. Yeah. I know it was. Um, you know, one of the things that we always um, 
we, we, we remind ourselves, and I think we remind ourselves privately, and I'm sure you do this um, uh, yourself in your quiet times, but we need to pray for this election, guys. We just yeah. do. We need to pray for our nation. Uh, you know, God's, uh, God's got to move in our nation to see what he really wants to, to have done. But of course, uh, you know, voting and, and our election is part of that. So would you just lift up the election? Yeah, to absolutely. The Lord? Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for this upcoming election. And Father, we pray first and foremost that your will will be done, that thy will be done, thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we thank you that the right man will be in the office, that Father, the one that will be the most about your agenda for the nation, Father. We thank you that righteousness will rule and, and justice will roll and reign in our streets, Father. And we thank you, Lord, um, for any voter fraud or anything deceitful that would try to come out to change or to shift the election according to your plan. We stop it, the enemy, in Jesus' name. And Father, we just... We're going to give you all the glory and the praise. America has been a beacon of light and for the gospel that goes out all over the world. And the whole world is watching what is happening, Father. And we just pray that, that somehow, God, that you get all the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I would encourage you very much to continue as we just have a little over, you know, what, a week here? You know, just, uh, just less than a week. So yeah. just... Be in prayer, continue in prayer. We've got all the prayer requests to come. I want to share real quick. Uh, Donna called earlier this morning for prayer for God's healing for a friend. And uh, it, it, it just, it says the doctors were amazed at how well she is doing. So praise God for that. Uh, Sydney, would you, would you lift up the prayer request sure. to the Lord? So Father God, we just thank you for every single person, Father God, that is called in, Lord God. And I thank you for the person on the other side of the screen. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would move and have your way. And Lord God, I just pray for all of us that we would look up to you no matter, you know, we know that gross darkness is covering the, the earth, but we know that you're going to rise inside you. and your glory is going to come. So I just declare and decree that your glory is going to come over our earth, our nation, our world like never before, Lord God. And I believe, Lord God, that we're going to see an awakening. We're going to see revival. We're going to see souls come into the kingdom like never before because that's what it's all about Jesus in your name we pray amen amen amen, amen. good program thank you so ladies good. for being with us today thank you for being with us pastor Larry Huck as well and Jake thank you for uh, yeah. making this soup today yeah. thank, thank you, you. Jake. <laughs> but uh, again we thank you for being with us and uh, you know the program's called hope today because there is hope in Jesus every day no matter what you're going through God has hope for you today seek him and you will find him and you'll find that hope today also.